so yes sure thank you rajat so everyone today we will be looking into apr flow apr is nothing but automatic place and route which is a main concept in uh, physical design flow if you see uh, this is the physical design flow how can you okay uh, i hope you guys see my screen clear right uh, rajat the this part i can't see at my yeah. end because something okay so this is the apr flow and the other uh, the whole thing here to here is the whole physical design flow but if you see mostly everyone will be working on this part only these were nothing but uh, the verification part uh, this is related to we will compare net lists and everything and this is uh, this is it okay before we go into physical design flow this whole thing let's look at the as a grand flow okay uh, there are four major steps uh, in any integrated circuit those are rtl design rtl verification synthesis and physical design so what is mrd mrd market research document so there is a group of members who will be working on the market rate requirements that is needed in the market so they extract all the requirements and from those requirements they come up to frame a product uh once they come to frame a product they get the design specifications uh so in this design specifications they get to know what are the inputs and what are the outputs that are needed and what is the functional specification for that particular product uh so uh that is uh, your um uh, your design specification once you know the design specification that is uh, what are the inputs and what are the outputs and what the product should do on the top level we don't have to go into the block level part we just have to look at the top level and from the top level what should it do and what should uh, what are the inputs and what is the output that is needed this is covered in design specification and all this uh, um, so we basically extracting this information from the top level perspective and we don't need to go into the block level part so from the design specification we develop the architectural definition of this particular product so what are the sub blocks that are needed for this design specification corresponding to the inputs and outputs what are the sub blocks that are needed that is extracted in the architectural definition uh, for the product to be designed so once you frame up uh, once you frame up the top level architectural definition then the top level architectural definition will be subdivided into blocks which we call it as micro architecture the top level will be divided into sub blocks which we call it as micro architecture definition that means here the top block split up takes place micro architecture is subdividing your top level design into block level design so you do the micro architecture def definition and for each micro architecture definition you will be writing the rtl design so from design specification to <coughs> micro architecture definition we will be dealing with block level part only we will be having a top level module we will be having a top level module we will decide what are the inputs what are the outputs that are needed and we will get to know what is the uh, what do we have to put inside this once you develop the main architecture it will be divided into sub blocks which we call it as micro architecture means more like uh, let's say this is a top level block and it will be subdivided into sub blocks more like this sub blocks and for each of these sub blocks we will be writing a rtl code rtl design which is nothing but writing rtl code for each of these specifications <coughs> okay i hope you got it okay um, let's go to uh, so you done with the rtl design and then you go for rtl verification so what is the rtl verification rtl verification is nothing but checking the functionality of your particular design 
whatever we have designed, it should be verified, right? Most of the uh, design, I mean, most of the time we will spend on verification, it will be like 70% of the time. So the functionality will be checked only at this stage. We won't check at uh, the synthesis stage. We won't check at uh, this uh, physical design stage. Nowhere. Only we will check the simulation part here only. <coughs> Uh, the simulation part of your entire design or chip, you won't do anywhere. So yeah. even in synthesis like that. So simulation, uh, uh, okay. So simulation of your entire chip um, means uh, checking the functionality, uh, which, you, which you will do at uh, RTL code on your RTL port. So how will you do the RTL verification? Can anyone tell me? How will you do the verification of a particular RTL port? By writing Using the test bank? System very long. Yes, by using test bench, we will find out. Uh, uh, yes, like that. Uh, so we will write a test bench, we will give the input vectors and from that we will get to know how uh, whether, uh, whether it is uh, achieving the design specifications. We discuss it, right? I mean, we, that design has, we, we will know, we get to know the, how the, the behavior of the design, whether it is meeting the specifications or not. We will get to know here. If it is meeting, then we will go for synthesis, else we will go to RTL design again. So uh, this is the uh, RTL verification. And uh, let's go for synthesis. And what is synthesis? So synthesis means converting the RTL code into a gate level netlist. So in the synthesis part, what you are doing? The synthesis, uh, the synthesis plus DFT insertion uh, takes place at the same time. So what's the DFT? DFT means design for testability. So why we will give design for testability? So like I said, uh, <clears throat> uh, so in order to test your particular design, you will be adding a scan chain information here in the DFT insertion along with uh, along with the uh, RTL code. We will be giving DFT insertion also at the synthesis stage itself. Um, okay. uh, so in order to test whether each and every block in your gate level netlist is working fine or not, you will be adding scan chains. So these scan chains are basically yeah. added in order to check the working of your gate level netlist. Um, so the DFT insertion happens during since the stage itself only. Uh, prior to that, we are not inserting your DFT because uh, as I told told you the functional verification only done at the RTL stage because RTL because after RTL verification, you won't be checking the functionality of simulation, right? Because if you see when the code gets converted into a gate level netlist, it will be like uh, around millions of gates, right? Here it will be like code, but here uh, each and every one of the uh, instances were converted into a uh, more like a blocks. So there will be millions of gates. And we can't give test vectors. Test vectors means vector stimulus, which are more like test bins. We can't give stimulus because it will take uh, months, because it takes a huge runtime for uh, put those mil uh, transistors into simulation. So, so that is not a feasible solution. So if you want to check whether each and every circuit is working fine or not, for that we use DFT. We insert. Uh, we insert DFT into the module, into the RTL code itself, so that attachment of DFT happens during the synthesis stage itself. So the synthesis has three steps. What are they? Can anyone tell me uh, what are the three stages involved in synthesis? Hello? Okay, so the three steps are, one is translation, the second one is mapping.
translation the second step is mapping the third step is optimization uh someone is writing okay so these are the three steps involved is it translation or mapping is like uh, uh, technology mapping uh Which yes 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 technology mapping with respect to a particular fab yes what is translation over here so translation means uh, we are converting each and every instance in the rtl code into uh, a particular block that happens during translation i hope you got it okay uh, sir is there any uh, difference between dot v file between this uh, gate gate list and net list without any uh, this technology and with technology uh, i don't get your point actually so see uh, until until if you go for physical design flow and we get the net list until then you don't get what is the area sir see, i mean uh, uh, see all this happens in, uh, yes yes tell. in synthesis there are of course a log logical optimization also yes there is logical optimization which is happens yes. here in synthesis the rtl dot file and the file that dot rtl dot v file and the synthesis dot v file that is generated is any difference in between them sir can anyone hear me Hello. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Uh, okay. Oh, we can hear you. Okay. Let me continue. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so yes, until sir, now, sir. I am speaking to myself. <laughs> I thought some. I thought I, I lost the connection. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so let me go to translation. So what do you mean by translation? Let's say you have an RTL code. Uh, written rtl code for a flip flop flip flop the code should infer a d flip flop let's say so the translation of your code uh, code into a block happens during translation but you don't know in detail what type of a flip flop it is called uh, flip flop it is uh, so we don't know what whether it is a d flip flop or so uh, like that so that is called translation so uh, after translation we will go for mapping so at mapping stage you see all this is nothing but uh, automatic flow we don't need to do anything the tool can do it itself we just need to provide the inputs that's it so what we are providing to the tool here so we are providing the rtl design we are providing the rtl design plus dft insertion for the synthesis and it will come as a netlist right that's it so let's go for mapping now um <clears throat> So at mapping stage, you will be applying the target libraries. So at synthesis stage, you will be specifying like for uh, what library, for what technology you're doing the synthesis. Maybe you're doing the technology for 40 nanometer technology and you're targeting it for a specific fab. Let's say we have fabs like TSMC fab, Intel fab and so on. So let's say you're targeting it for a TSMC fab now and a 40 nanometer technology. So if you are targeting for a particular technology and a particular fab, you need to include those library files of that particular technology of that uh, particular fab. So that including of the library happens at synthesis stage. Till RTL stage, if you see here, till RTL stage, everything is technology independent. We don't know which, uh, like, <clears throat> which technology and which far you are targeting for. We don't know it is a TSMC fab. We don't know whether we just know that there is a design specification and we have to uh, get the uh, output for it. That's it. But uh, but when it comes to synthesis, it uh, the technology dependence of this product, uh, which will start here, product uh, technology dependency. And it moves on till tape out stage. So during mapping, you will be applying the library files of a particular technology and particular fab. 
So from each of these fab for a particular technology, you will be extracting the library files. So you will be getting the deep flip flops of TSMC, uh, all the all of uh, deep flip flops or say inverters, muxes, uh, uh, whatsoever the gates are there, which with respect to 40 nanometers technology and TSMC, they will be coming here. Um, uh, so for uh, like that, we have different drive stems. Regarding to this 40 nanometer technology, uh, huh. I did not get is the size of the IC or related to that uh, tool related. I did not get this 40 nanometer technology. Okay, so uh, hmm, okay, um, okay. So let's say you have a few gates, right? Let's say you have a few gates. Yes. Every gate, every gate has a different drive strength and a different uh, technology. More like 40 nanometer technology means it has. What is 40 nanometer? Can you anyone tell me? What is 40, 40 nanometer? Length of the channel. Yes, length of the channel, but it is applicable up to a particular stage means up to 180 nanometer up to you know as the technology stringers what do you say string okay as the technology strings shrinks uh, so this dependency is varying it depends on a lot of other factors so it just does not depend on um, you know just does not depend on uh, this uh, 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 but you see, GF has a different uh, different kind of technology. TSMC have a different techno uh, type of you know more like you know G FDSO FDSO these kind of things right FDSO soy MOSFETs. Okay. Soy no, MOSFETs. Okay. Uh, so because of these things, we get the technology dependency here. Okay. So, uh, so at the fab for 40 nanometer with different drive strengths, uh, at mapping stage, this flip, uh, the flip flop for uh, the other gates will be converted into DFM, DF1 or so like that. So, DF1 is nothing but the instance name of the D flip flop of TSMC fab, which is targeted for 40 nanometer technology. So, we have to include the library files of the TSMC fab for 40 nanometer technology before you do the synthesis. So what are the inputs required for synthesis? The model files, uh, sorry, the library files and the RTL design, which are required and the DFT insertion needs to be takes place and we will get the net list. I hope you got me, right? Guys, can you hear me properly, right? Okay. Yeah. So, Again, uh, the translation which happens, it is independent of uh, this technology and uh, fab. But at, when it comes to mapping, it is technology dependent. So whatever the blocks, blocks has been translated, translated into the built-in library files or library modules which are there. So, uh, uh, so what are those library modules? Library modules might consist of an under gate or gate muxes. It might consist of an encoder also. And all these gates are designed by a whom? Can you tell me who designs these gates? Anyone? Standard cell. Standard cell. Yes. Design. Yes. The layout design, full custom layout designer, and we call it standard cell layout designer. Yes. Uh, with respect to transition level, they will pull these gates and they will put these gates in the model files and we will get those files uh, and we will do the uh, synthesis. <clears throat> so, okay, yes. So the layout engineer, the layout engineer uh, will build the layout of all the cells and portion of that layout information is extracted. We call it FRAMU. We, we will co cover that uh, FRAMU uh, in the you know physical design flow. Framing is nothing but uh, there are few views which we use for physical design flow. It is nothing but it contains the layout information, but it is an abstract view. 
it is just to reduce the memory footprint. Uh, so, so you guys know, right? Layout can uh, layout takes place a huge amount of memory, but if we give it to tool, it consumes a lot of memory, right? So instead of doing that, only what we will do, we will provide the frame view just to reduce the memory footprint. Memory footprint is nothing but the memory consumption. We try to reduce the memory consumption. That's it. Yes, thank you. Um, so the last one is optimization. So at optimization, we are trying to reduce the number of blocks. So at optimization, uh, you know, we will be having Boolean algebra loss. I hope you done this part in logic design, right? You, you all have logic design where we use K-maps and everything where all the Boolean or, uh, expressions will be saved here. And we will use these Boolean, uh, you know, Boolean expressions to reduce the number of blocks in the net list. Why do these blocks needs to be reduced? Can anyone help me with this? Why do these blocks or anything? Why do these? It will faster. It will make faster? faster because it will reduce the gate delay. Yes. The amount of fallout will reduce. Oh, sorry for not right? to uh, optimize yeah. the yeah. area as well. Yes, perfect. To optimize the area and to power reduce the power yes, optimization yes. also. Yes, and to reduce the power. To do these things, we will do the uh, uh, we will do the optimization. So uh, everything that is related to the Boolean algebra laws, all these things will be done in optimization stage. So the output that you get out of this synthesis stage is nothing but a netlist, a text file which contains of instances of your flip flops and their connectivity. So after the netlist got generated, you go for LEC check. So why LEC check is needed? LEC check is needed because uh, uh, so what is LEC firstly? LEC is nothing but logical equivalence check. So if you want to do check whether uh, the functionality of the netlist is correct or whatever, uh, the interconnection that got generated, whether it is matching with your original RTL code, we have to check, right? Whether the netlist that have got generated because a lot of optimization happened and we have to know whether it is matching with the RTL code or not, the functionality of this design. We are not doing any uh, you know simulations here we are just comparing the rtl design with the netlist so what are the inputs for lec see inputs uh, when i say in inputs those are important for this particular check if you see here yes netlist and what are we comparing with if you see here we are comparing yeah. it with the rtl design file rtl code So, so if you want to check whether the functionality of this netlist is correct or uh, not, we will do LEC check. So in order to check the netlist has the correct functionality, uh, we don't need to give stimulus and, you know, and the output, uh, <clears throat> because you know, right, uh, if you give stimulus, what will happen? It will take lots of time, uh, more like months it will take. So that's why we will avoid the uh, giving stimulus and everything. Okay. So, <laughs> if you see the flow diagram, you can see we can get the input from RTL yeah. code and the netlist. Yes. Uh, in LEC, the RTL code is converted to gate level. No, 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 no. In LEC, see, let me come make it clear again. Because this, can anyone tell? Okay, what is the output? Fine. No. Yes. And why do we get here? Because can't we can't we have a responsibility to check the you know functionality? We are we comparing have, right? the, re the result of output from netlist yes. and whatever output from the RTL code. Yes. RTL code. See, we are giving here RTL code as input to the logic synthesis, right? We are yes. giving RTL code as 
we just did archival verification but it doesn't we we can't add testament just to the synthesis we we are only giving this rtl design to this synthesis after the synthesis what will happen we will get a netlist but we need to know see all the netlist that is having that is nothing but instances of your rtl design only it is just converting rtl design into a netlist nothing is changing except it is doing some modifications it's having some algorithm it is changing with respect to that and it is making a text file which is the netlist file and we have responsibility to check that netlist see if you the tools they don't know they don't they don't know what they are doing they just have the algorithm they don't know the functionality they don't, don't understand those things so we need to know whether this functionality that coming out of it we need to know whether it is correct or not so we do logic uh, lec which we compare rtl design plus plus netlist that is why we do lec i hope you got my point any any doubts sir here one doubt actually uh, yes. for rtl verification we are giving the rtl design right verification engineer uh, also check the design specification document like that when verifying the design yes see uh, uh, guys what are you think uh, so tell me one thing do you think this is more like a flow like this i mean you see everything is in a linear this manner right more like you see this manner rtl design is completed verification is completed synthesis is completed lec is done preload test is done and uh, next physical design everything is done do you think these things go like this no it will be done parallelly yes perfect it will be done parallelly yes i think so rtl verification is mostly lead to uh, functionality check yes but in the next list we are matching mm -hmm. that is there any behavior change from the rtl code out or netlist out see behavior won't change see at optimization what we will do we are we are using boolean laws to we have some boolean laws right which we can uh, reduce the number of gates and we can reduce the number of amount of things right so the tool may can you know it doesn't know few things so it may, may replace or few uh, interconnects may missing if if such kind of things happen what will happen if we don't do lec let's see it might the timing goes and it goes for a physical design but if it misses the interconnect and it will get missed in physical design flow and at the end if it goes for tape out what will happen it will be a huge loss right to the whole thing what we are doing we are comparing rtl code we are not giving any test benches or any thing we are just giving rtl code with respect to netlist a dot a verilog file will be there and we are comparing that verilog file with netlist that have generated here i hope you got right now anything clear So, sir, how we are comparing this very long file with the netlist? Like, there is a some. So, so there yes, we will give uh, you know there is one tool called FM uh, for Synopsis, and for other vendors there is other tools. The tool will automatically do these things when we when we give the netlist and RTL design. For uh, you know LEC is not like uh, for uh, you know L different LECs are there. but here we are giving netlist and rtl design and the fm tool will do all the checks and it will automatically compile it and if it if it fails it will go for logic synthesis or if it fails for uh, and if it fails again uh, it will go for rtl design like that we have to do the uh, things so hello guys so we are like uh, converting huh yes Uh, this meeting will yeah. be over ended in one minute so if anyone drop the meeting just rejoin the same link rejoin the same link this meeting will be ended in one minute so just rejoin the same link see uh, the main thing about synthesis see we know every rtl code that might you have see, seen is cannot be synthesizable 
because there are certain rules that were, we, we need to follow that the RTL code can be synthesizable. So there are certain rules to uh, write the RTL code also. So if those rules doesn't meet, then those, uh, then the it won't be synthesized. So if it won't synthesize, what does it mean? Can anyone tell me if it's, it's not synthesized at a particular point, what does it mean? Can't we generate the next we will generate it. So, okay. After, okay, let's say, okay. Uh, okay, so what are the inputs to the LEC? The RTL code and the netlist. Not synthesizable means like we will not be able to develop a hardware, is it? No. What is hardware? See, it's actually a hardware only. But uh, hardware is more like, uh, you know, the term will come to a physical part. It's not like that. So we are, it's a, it's a software only. It will create the blocks and it will insert, you know, for each block, it will create the, you know, mapping is done, right? What is mapping? Mapping means nothing but uh, it will, with respect to a particular fab, with respect to whatever the cells that are there in that particular uh, library, we will convert those into these blocks. Those blocks will be, you know, converted into these instances like that. And we will do the optimization. And after optimization, uh, we will get the netlist. Uh, so we will compare RTL code with logical uh, RTL code with the netlist. So if it it passes, then we will go for pre layout test here. Next, uh, so for pre layout test, so here is the first time, here is the time, first time we are doing timing analysis in the whole flow. So uh, even if the functionality is correct, even the functionality is correct, but if the timing fails, uh, so the uh, chip might fail, right? So let's consider an ATM mission. Uh, so the functionality is correct for it, but uh, you given, uh, uh, so even if the functionality is correct, but uh, that time it takes to get the money out, you have waited for five minutes and 10 minutes and uh, the money came then, then what is the benefit of it, right? We need it in uh, like time, right? So if time doesn't meet, then what is the use of it? So timing is a very crucial value when you design any product. That's why HTA plays a crucial role in physical design as well as in this synthesis stage. Every uh, uh, physical design engineer or synthesis engineer or HTA engineer must have the knowledge of HTA. Okay. So since you are uh, generating your layer here, you so, okay. so you're not generating your layout here, right? You have a gate level netlist with an interconnect of, uh, of cells. The blocks, you don't have a layout information uh, of that, you you know, that's why we call it pre-layout test. It doesn't have layout information. We just have a level, gate level netlist with interconnect of all cells of the blocks, that's it. We don't have the RNC information, resistance, you know, capacity, yes. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so we will be doing some checks here, uh, like, uh, you know, whether it is meeting the setup checks, whether it is meeting the setup or hold, uh, if it's uh, meeting the every timing, if it meets the timing, then we will go for physical design flow. Otherwise, we will go to the synthesis stage and I can we do synthesis and then we will go for physical design flow. Okay, okay. Uh, if uh, so, guys, you know which tool, which is the standard uh, timing tool that we use for HTA, industry standard tool. Prime time, Innovus. Yes, Synopsis Prime Time is the industry standard tool that we use for uh, calculation the timing of uh, HTA which is the industry standard tool from Synopsis vendor. So in the, uh, so in PD, physical design, 
the first part is apr flow apr is nothing but automatic place and route we don't go deep into apr because it's uh, you know the apr is more like this it consists of the logical and physical design setup physical data setup flow plan everything it involves so it takes huge time so i will get less deep into this apr flow and then we will proceed into these things and then the whole physical design flow like that but yeah that is then set up and everything we can uh, yeah in uh, so in pd the first part is uh, apr automatic place and route automatic place and route so so once you have the net list here in api stage so at api stage what are the inputs so what are the inputs that we are giving here apr for api we are giving in at least that is passed through all these stages in at least that is passed through all these stages and the timing way that net list we are giving it to the api flow so here what we will do we define the boundary. only net list sir only net list it's not just net list it's not just net list the api requires many inputs let's see okay. many inputs are there but what is in the flow what we are giving here see okay. uh, because we are giving many inputs like library vendors will give library files where we don't have to touch what inside that so like that many files are there yes Hmm. Okay. So what we do is we define the boundary. We define a core area, and the tool will place the tool itself will place all the cells that we have in the net list in the boundary. All the tools, all the macros will be sitting outside here, and at the corner, if you see here, here there will be standard cells will be placed here, like that. Yes. So, okay. everything. Uh, so, so, uh, and uh, inside the boundary, we will place the standard cells and everything. And here we have the layout information, right? We have the layout information. The entire thing should be done in API flow, but you have to give some constraints. You have to make the timing right, so you have to give the constraints. You have to give the you know uh, few things like that, uh, so everything is automatic. Except you have to do some modifications to meet the design requirements. So the tool has done the placement, so the interconnections might vary. Oh, oh, whatever the interconnections that we see in the gate level, uh, gate level net list, uh, some interconnect, some interconnections, the tool has to keep it. But there is any if there is any issue of the interconnections, uh, so it may miss the interconnections. So those interconnections may be missed. So after API stage, if those interconnections were missed or anything happens, we will do LEC again. So here, what are the inputs that we are giving? Uh, are we giving the net list here? What are the what are the inputs that we are giving here? Can anyone tell me? For a, this cell is GDS file and uh, netlist. Uh, okay, yes. So we are giving the layout information, which is the GDS file, and we are giving what is uh, what is the other thing that we are giving the netlist. Why we are comparing this this netlist with this one uh, instead of RTL code? We see at synthesis stage we will compare RTL code with netlist, right? At synthesis stage, what are the things we will compare? RTL code and netlist for LEC. But here, since the netlist is passed, we don't need to check again. But here again, at APR flow. It we have the layout information, and the tool might do some uh, 
modifications to that. So the interconnection may be or something may be, and the buffers also, right? You know, for operations is okay. Someone okay. So you know, no right clock to synthesis where we will add a few buffers to uh, slow down the design or if we remove the buffers to fast the design the or we add few other things just to... Okay. Who has made the deadline? Suraj Dagar. Okay, there is some spammer actually from Mother Kothini. Okay, okay. 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 No problem, no problem. Just I am removing yeah. the 10 percent. Actually, these are from expensive institute, actually from Bangalore. Just wait more. Okay. Can you tell me the name of the person who is using this pen? Uh, Suraj, Suraj Dagar. Suraj okay. Dagar. I'm, uh, yes. I'm blocking that person. Yeah. Yeah, he is in mode. Yeah, you can continue now. Yeah. Actually, they are from uh, so like we know. If you want to check the missed out interconnections, you have to just share the screen like again once again. Just share the screen. Uh, that netlist will be compared with this. Because when tool is placing the cells over here in the boundary, it does some mm -hmm. optimizations in order to meet your timing, area, power, and speed. It might add some buffers, it may delete some buffers, it might upsize your cells and downsize your cells and all those things. So netlist might netlist gets changed, right? So the netlist changed. Should be logically the netlist that changed should be logically equal to the uh, netlist that got from the this this flow. So we do L J. The netlist in the synthesis stage mm -hmm. and the netlist which we are getting from the APR state, what would we check over there? So, logical check only, mostly we will do logical check only. But since we are adding few buffers and few other things. Okay. Using uh, APR. Yes. No, not using APR. For LEC, there are few other tools are there. Okay. okay. Uh, there is so, other, other tool for LEC, I mean to say. Um, yes. Yes. LEC for, you know, in my case, I used the FM tool, which, for, which is used for uh, LEC check. Yes. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Who is this person? Who is this person? Uh, Sir, so you can tell me the name. Hello, Sai. Hello. So, means just wait, wait. So, hey, you can tell me the name of this person. Uh, His name Parikshit. is Parikshit. 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 P. P. A. R. I. Actually, they are the spammer from the expensive institute of Bangalore and Hyderabad. And everyone knows the name of the coaching center, right? Yes, yes. Okay, fine. Yeah, you can start. I have removed it first. Okay, so uh, each of these standard cells will be, uh, you know, connecting with some interconnects, right? Each of the standard cells in the layout will be connected with some interconnects. Each of the standard cells will be connected with some interconnects. So, uh, so these interconnects will be, uh, you know, so these interconnects you will be calling you, you know, as metals like M1, M4, M5, like that based on the, you know, uh, more like. The capacity of power, uh, I mean to say that. 
the how yes, much yes, it will handle yes 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 for standard shelves we will go for the lower metals because they can't handle the higher metals right if they i hope you getting they can't handle higher metals yes okay so uh, when i say metal what it will have it will have a length and a width right any semiconductor will be having a resistance uh, because of uh, what is the equation for the resistance what is the tau equals to rc you mean to say no, that no no for uh, with respect to area what is the formula r equals to rho l r by a yes rho l okay. by a. yes this is the formula so every every uh, metal that we are having a parasitic uh, you know parasitic resistance is there with respect to the if the length of the wire increases then the resistance increases and uh, if there is another wire that the uh, parallel wire which is having the parallel wire sitting next to it then the capacitance increases so what will happen the design may get slow down right like that uh, that's why we will do these checks so in high technology nodes like you know 250 nanometer 180 nanometer uh, you can neglect these interconnects can anyone tell me why we will neglect neglect these interconnects in the interconnect you know parasitics interconnect uh, interconnect parasitics in the higher technology nodes but not in the lower technology nodes could you repeat can the question anyone? please why do we ignore the interconnect interconnects like uh, resistance capacitance uh, in the higher capacity nodes like 150 nanometers or 180 nanometers but why not in 40 nanometers like such kind of technologies because at the lower node as we go on the timing will be critical at that situations there could be not like, even timing but power also like power constraints yeah like Yeah, power constraints. I am. I am saying all all PPA power performance area. It will be impacted. Yes. yes. So if you see it, uh, yes. Yes. You can continue. Okay. So if you go for higher technology nodes, whatever the parasitic capacitances you see here, those were very high, negligible. are uh, not negligible compared to these interconnects but when we go to lower technology nodes when we go to lower technology nodes what will happen as the technology size shrinks 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 the interconnect the of channel the length of channel and the parasitics whatever those are they are becoming negligible but what is constant here this interconnects these interconnects are constant but this parasitics are getting lower and lower and lower and this interconnect parasitics taking a impact on that right so so we can't say that uh, interconnect will be dominant at the lower technology yes yes correct thank you yes okay so after parasitic extra, so after the parasitic parasitic extraction we will go for post layout test a in pre layout test a uh, you know we are not bothered about the connecting wire r and c because of the r and c the signal get delayed because the resistor it acts like a charging and discharging loop so signal get delayed means it uh, means it affecting my timing so in pre layer test a we don't include parasitic information because you don't have any core area we don't know where exactly these cells will be placed and how long these wires are but in apr stage we have a core area you have the wires interconnects which in placed in horizontal direction or vertical direction like that uh, uh, you know where exactly these cells are placed and how long is the wire length so that is why you do the parasitic extraction and then uh, do a post layout test here any doubts here anyone <laughs> hello yeah i have one doubt like yes. where does the routing and uh, pin assignment stages will come under like in apr or later stages 
inside see, in api in api only everything will happen in api see oh. api is not a, you know we will do lot of iterations not just one mm -hmm. not just two we will do lot of iterations with respect to placement uh, we will not just placement we will do lot of iterations for the floor plan with which everything depends on the thing uh, and in part time we will get some terminals at the core core boundary and those will be used to do part time like those kind of things which will happen in apr stage and at apr stage after apr stage uh, we will do all of these lc checks parity extraction and we will do for post level test here from the like this and with the design is made we will look for physical go for physical verification and uh, yeah one question that i just over here yes in apr you told me that it is a lot of iteration from floor planning placement and clock tracing this is whatever the stages are there but yes, when yes. we go in the floor planning everything there are some physical cell already present in that core boundary area which is pre occupied physical? some space physical cells like physical micros like already placed hard block okay. we call it i think yes. if i'm not wrong yes yes and the rest are the rest of the area we occupied with some standard cells whatever the technology node we have to go with that so oh. does this come under apr uh, all thing will take care or we have to put as a input something over there okay. am i making the clearing question or should i ask again in the yes yes you are clear you are clear let me okay. go for another screen okay so let me go for this okay. so at floor plan what we will do there will be a bunch of macros will be sitting outside the boundary it can be rectilinear or it can be a rect so this is the core boundary it can be any shape and uh, not like any shape it can it, it have a particular shape with respect to the top level block i am considering only on micro block here one block here so uh, we will have we will place all of these macros into this place into the core boundary and the standard cells will be sitting here we won't put standard cells along with macros in one go okay first uh, we will do floor plan then what we will do power plan we will place horizontal and vertical stripes like this with respect to different metal stacks and then we will go for placement what is placement placements is nothing but we are placing all the standard cells into the range uh, in my case uh, it is metal two which we will place in the metal two rails uh, like this and at cta stage we will try to do clock tracing this which we will add buffers and everything which are related to the uh, you know Uh, cl uh, clock related uh, paths and at routing stage we will do all the interconnects uh, not like uh, this is this is different from the interconnect that happen during routing and at last we will go for drc lvs and F uh, dfm uh, where we will cover in the course and uh, yes Sir, is it clear stages yeah, whatever the stages you have explained over here does tool have in bui all the uh, like uh, enable things are there like to just click on the floor plan then it will do floor plan for you no 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 so how do we need to uh, like uh, physically sit and uh, everything we have to set up by ourselves in that tool okay. okay so when it comes to placement cts routing uh, you don't need to do anything the tool will do itself but you have to do some modifications to achieve the goals of timing or what so ever okay those are there yeah. yeah but in floor plan see the tool can place the there is there are few options like auto place uh, of the there which in which the tool will place all the standard cells and macros in the uh, in this in this core area but this is not a feasible solution so we will use uh, our own by our own self seeing the you know understanding the functionality and everything we will try to place we will we have some guidelines to do in we have to follow in during floor plan we will follow those guidelines and we will place all of these macros at the edges like that and the peripherals like that and all the pins should be like this we will place all the macros near to the pins like this so 
uh, floor during floor plan we would place all the macros by ourselves just for you know uh, meeting making the placement and those things easy if that will do you see uh, it's there nothing but uh, you know it wastes our time okay? oh. floor plan is necessary to do by ourselves it is a good thing that we are doing if we do floor plan by ourselves and when it comes to power plan we will have some pitch and those are there which we will cover during the other you know other uh, other yeah like that okay other session okay. ah, yes yes thank you uh, now like i said we don't do any simulations after uh, artillery verifications right at the same like that we will do physical verification again and after that we will go for dfm so can anyone tell me what is dfm why we need to do this why it is important do we need to follow design flow methodology design for manufacturability design yes for manufacturability dfm stands for design for manufacturability so Uh, this dfm issues doesn't show up soon after the hardware is manufactured this dfm issues will pop up after prolonged use of the product let's say you have designed an sc ic for a mobile application and this dfm issues will show up after uh, let's say one or two years after prolonged use uh, your mobile gets hanged up or even when you click a particular application it it takes longer time to load all these all these you know uh, longer time to load all these uh, uh, dfm issues so but the dfm issues we will try to fix uh, during the manufacturing stage itself because these dfm issues are studied from the previous product that got released from the pre you know that uh, over the years of use that and the people have faced the uh, the customers that have faced the issue and they will they will raise a query that we are facing this issue and we will brought back uh, brought back the product to the uh, you know site and we will do some uh, checks why it happened whatsoever that happened why it's not working why this is got delayed and uh, we will get to know the uh, dfm issue mainly uh, i mean this this is dfm the reason for this is dfm and we will conclude it and we will give some spacing also uh, between the wires and we will you know reduce the dfm issues but it's not a, we will can't, we can't cover the dfm issues 100% but you know more like 70% also it's it's more like the prolonged the more we use so so why this dfm issue will comes the dfm issue mainly occurs because the charge gets accumulated at a certain point uh, resulted in you know shorts and opens that's why this dfm issues will come uh, let's say there are two wires in connected to a block and uh, due to uh, some accumulation of charges at one place and the concentration got increased and this got shorted and what will happen the design, the you know there is a mismatch in the behavior of your uh, particular product uh, and uh, maybe even if the product works there is a there is a mismatch in the productivity and the behavior of the product as well as uh, you know uh, be, uh, the de the device the product starts behaving uh, in a particular way uh, so and the device got hanging also so we will have, uh, so to avoid this we will give some we have some dfm rules to follow we will follow those from the previous studies and we will avoid this uh, dfm issues and uh, opc means optical proximity check which yes I, yeah okay uh, and and we uh, at the end if a dfm is passing then we will go for tape out where you know uh you will get a, a hardware chip on your hand that's it yes any doubts i have a doubt yeah i have a doubt like uh, what are the parameters that are uh, making difference in between the technology nodes like for example at consider the nanometers like 40 and 5 nanometer like 
what okay. are the parameters that are actually making difference mm -hmm. so where so parameters means mostly we will go for drc only right each parameter so we will go for uh, so we have conventional mosfets at uh, 180 nanometers or so and uh, uh, you know at 40 nanometers we, have, we are using some other technology more like uh, soil mosfets and at 5 nanometers we are using finfets so currently uh, we are uh, mostly using finfets which uh, they have their own uh, you know uh, more like their own you know st uh, rules for them to follow uh, so like oh, i'm expecting like what are the challenges uh, in between these two nodes okay like what so kind of challenges when the when the, when the when the let's say when the oh, when the technology string, string, strings what will happen i think parasitic uh, effect will be more parasitic more, effect yeah. will be more and the drcs will increase Right. DRVs will be increased. More crosstalk mm -hmm. issues will be coming. Yes, crosstalk will increase. To number of second number order of metal, number mm -hmm. of metal routing issues will be coming. Yes. Like what I know is, uh, uh, I know of two uh, two things. Uh, one is of crosstalk, and one more is uh, electro migration and uh, mm -hmm. airdrop as well. So, yes. other than this, are there any parameters that are impacting? DRVs. Tran, cap, yeah, fan of the Yes. See, uh, mostly all of these, uh, you know, while you are doing only a project, you will get to know what are the issues that you are facing. More like uh, you will face max capacitance issues will be, you will face, why max capacitance issues will come? More like, uh, you know, as the number of outputs will increase, as the fan outs will increase, what will happen? As the fan out increase, what will happen? If output load cannot drive the input then the fan out issues will be coming yes so these type of all of these type of issues will be coming and you have to fix them by you know by placing more like let's say uh, you know we can do like this i don't remember that term uh, but we can uh, drive so what will what is happening here can you tell me we'll what is happening the the, we are, yes we are distributing the load so we are reducing the uh, capacitance and everything like this kind of methodologies we will do so when it comes to rc values of the metal layers will it be same for the both like is it same? Forty and four. No, there is a wide difference between these technologies. Yes, yes. As I, difference. As I, the RC values will vary. When I was like, like I have little transistors. We sorry. Uh, we came from CMOS to FinFET. Similarly, like uh, for RC, like what uh, what what and all are changing. See, when it comes to FinFET, the whole uh, conventional market structure is changing now. The whole yeah, when it comes market. to transistor. Uh, I can able to understand about, uh, with uh, yes, yes. yeah, I can able to understand so, with this transistor uh, level, but how it is important so values. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Uh, so when it comes to FinFET, mostly the issue we are facing is the fins that we are placing mainly, and their heights may vary, right? Fins. See, the main issue when it comes to FinFET is the fin that is getting placed here. So a lot of issues will come with respect to, uh, you know, uh, we will do some uh, trench, ice, uh, trench isolation like this. Uh, because of these uh, fins, uh, the, the actual area which is getting impacted. And so uh, if this is, this is, you know, this is not perfectly aligned, then there will be a lot of, you know, uh, resistance and capacitance issues will come. Um, 
there are many para com meter com under well like because as when till 14 nanometer we have a conventional mos but we when we go down we have lead to the fin fat and then there are many improvement happen in the fin fat also how the gate will channelize at that time surrounding that as if i'll talk about the tsmc working for 5 nanometer their gate alignment is quite different in the normal fin fat which we used to see in the 14 nanometer 12 nanometer technology so there are many things like uh, whatever sir has explained like something there are many points which will come it's not a, like single answer for that so challenges are many on that but uh, we can lo know a little more if we'll go more deeper yeah. on this guys just uh, do one thing right. the meeting will be over in one or two minutes so just uh, if the meeting will be over just uh, rejoin the same link also uh, tell me like uh, how many of you are like uh, freshers like who are doing btech here flow we will go one by one we will go one by one like logical uh, logical and physical data setup flow plan power plan power placement cts routing and drc and airways and dfm uh, firstly we will go over logical and data setup uh, so the api tool so api tool is in case of uh, synopsis icc2 or fusion compiler Mostly we will go for ICC one, ICC two, which is a uh, wonderful synopsis. Synopsis. Okay. So, what is data set? Now, loading logical and physical data into the tool. Okay. Data setup. So, and there is a way of supplying those inputs to that tool. Uh, it could be a tickle script. Library standard cells, IO cells, memory cells, timing scenarios, which are the time leaves, and all these constitute to the logical data. Uh, apart from this, the API tool also requires, you know, physical data. Until now, you know, we have handled only logical data. Logical data like, you know, synthesis, all these things comes under logical data only. Uh, like, uh, or it could be a timing model, or it could be a behavior model. Uh, these are logical view. But physical view relates to the layout of a design, physical data. Relates to the layout of a design. Uh, you know, every cell that we got from the library vendor, every cell that we got from the library vendor, it has a particular uh, corresponding layout view. Let's say you have a cell called and two cross one, two cross one. It has a particular layout view from in a from a particular uh, library vendor. And as a layout design engineer, you know, uh, as a physical design engineer, we, are, we don't need to touch this two cross one much. We just have to refer it That's from the uh, some other vendor. Uh, so without uh, without a layout view, you can't work on layout. And that is present in the physical reference library. Uh, it can be either Milky Way or it can be NDM. Okay. So this is data setup. We will give the inputs and we will give the uh, physical data and logical data to make the tool ready for physical uh, physical design flow. Okay. Okay. Um, this is for today, Rajat, everyone. Hello. Hello. Okay, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir.
Thank you. Thank you all. When will you have next meet? Uh, Rajat will ping you the evening. Okay. I will inform him. He will ping that. Okay. Is Rajat there? Not here. So anyone have any query now? Hello guys. Uh, Rajat, they're asking for the next session. Yeah, next sessions we will tell you. Just WhatsApp me. My number, you can write in the chat. I'm writing in the chat box. Just, uh, write my WhatsApp number. Just everyone who are interesting for the next session, just pinch me on the WhatsApp. I will tell you dates about the next sessions. Just pinch me on the WhatsApp. Fine. Nine, nine, six, sorry. Nine, six, four, three, zero, seven, zero, three, six, eight. Yeah, this is my WhatsApp number or you can visit our website. And fill the form of free master class. Fine. Anyone have any doubt, any query now? Anyone have any doubt? Okay, so should we end the meeting? Okay, how many of you have yeah. given the date exam? Winner ready, any query? Okay, then fine. We are ending the meeting. Thank you guys. Thank you so much.